you know, you'd have noticed that in recent times, uh, amongst women in general, there has been a huge uh, sense of uh, assertion in the sense they are wanting to come out of their earlier uh, bonds, out of their earlier spaces and they are trying to occupy different spaces now. I mean, just look at the sports field for example. I mean, you have women winning what in tennis, in wrestling, uh, in weightlifting. I mean, these are areas which were uh, assumed to be so highly male dominated. But now you find that women are doing so well and they are uh, proving that they can come into any of these fields and they can do uh, equally if not better than uh, men. And it is not only this, it is not only sports or in areas of this sort. In education also, there have been men, uh, you know, women in much larger numbers who are aspiring, coming into higher education in, in newer uh, fields, um, uh, in communication, etcetera. But also, if you look at the um, gram panchayats, if you look at the municipalities, there has been an impact of this uh, uh, you know, 33 percent and now 50 percent reservation for women. Uh, in the local bodies and in the gram panchayats, where you find large numbers of women have come into the political system at those levels, at the levels where they can take decisions about uh, area level problems, civic issues, things that they are familiar with. So, they are making those decisions, they are willing to come in over there, they are willing to fight the elections and they are doing it, right. So, you have a large mass of women trying to come into these public spaces as individuals, you know, as people on their own. Now, this somewhere you have a larger social system which does not favor this shift, which in fact no, does not favor, I think, is putting it mildly. What we have noted is that there is a hostility, and this hostility comes from a mindset which sees women in that ancient patriarchal mold know what we call Manuvadi. Now, this Manuvadi ideology uh, continues to try all the time to entrap women within those uh, existing uh, norms of the household, the family, you have to have four children. You look at some of the bayans that are being given by some of the you know the Hindutva leaders here and there, the RSS leaders. I mean, they are not uh, shy of putting it or saying it, though it is against our constitution, it is against our democratic rights. They are not bothered, they are saying women have to be here, they have to bear so many children and so on and so forth and they are trying to uh, create this conservatism as a system which will continue to shape the woman's uh, uh, future. Now, this is something that the women are resisting, these women who are coming out, they are so, there is a backlash, there is a conservative backlash. So, what we are trying to show is that this conservative backlash is taking place A, because these Hindutva forces are on the rise and are trying to reimpose these kind of regressive ideas and ideologies, Manuvadi, and which is highly you know Brahminical also. Caste, uh, if you look at how they have treated the Dalits, how they look at the Dalits, etcetera, that also feeds into this. And second, most dangerous aspect of this is that they are being often upheld by the state because the BJP in power represents these uh, forces rather than the forces of you know democratic rights, equality, and your constitutional uh, spaces, your uh, fundamental freedoms. It does not represent that it represents this. So, therefore, today we find that the state when it has to step in, the law even when it has to step in, no, it should step in in a particular way, it is stepping in to push the legal uh, framework backwards. So, that is something we want to bring out and this is where you know how section 498A is sought to be weakened, how uh, PC PNDT act uh, in a new situation where you know you have a booming economy apparently, but economic growth has not meant equal growth, it has not meant equitable growth, it has not meant that your poor are less poor or that the backward are less backward and that they are moving in towards a more you know greater share of what is uh, being produced or uh, that is not what it means, they are being further uh, pushed back. As a, as a result of these kind of uh, uh, development paradigm, you know, the, the uh, neoliberal uh, development uh, paradigm what we say, 
because of that the women who are aspiring and are moving into this actually become more vulnerable to the sort of crimes and assaults that are occurring. So, you have a, a double attack on them, a twin barreled attack. So, today we are at this point of time where women will uh, are resisting, will have to resist, will have to come out stronger and will have to understand what is happening in this current framework. And that is why we feel that you know a political, a social an economic and a cultural change. All these changes will have to occur simultaneously. You have to see the whole paradigm. That is why this convention is of particular importance. The Edwa National Convention is of particular relevance. So, one area would be we have to safeguard the rights that we have won uh, in legal terms. That is safeguard the laws. These laws See, if you remember even after this uh, whole episode uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, this Nirbhaya uh, Khand in Delhi, after that that rape law was amended and in that Asad Varma had said that marital rape should be included. But today what do you see? You see actually that there is a pull back, there is no effort to ensure this is brought in, rather there is an effort to show that this will destroy the family. What? You, you want to keep the family alive where rape is allowed, marital rape is acceptable, that is the thing you are trying to post. So, we are saying safeguard the rights that have been won already and move for more gender just laws. So, this is one very important area. We need those laws, uh, they themselves may not bring about total change, but the laws are part and parcel of the larger uh, system where equity and equality can be uh, assured to all including women. Second thing is that against this regressive kind of uh, kind of ideology, where you find that women are being encapsulated again, captured again, trying to be you know uh, can you thrust a genie back into a bottle? I doubt very much, but they are trying very hard and they are using all kinds of diversionary tactics. They will you know they will uh, uh, pretend uh, something this is because of this, but till now blaming the victim for the crime against her is across board happening. In many of the states those who speak tomorrow, they will be mentioning how uh, you know they have been attacked and uh, assaulted uh, and uh, they themselves have been blamed for the crime that has been committed against them. So, this regressive ideology, Manuvadi uh, ideology, this is something we will take on and uh, one in one step towards that we hope that we can have some kind of social reform uh, campaign, maybe uh, you know uh, use uh, 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 Phule, Savitriba Phule's uh, birthday comes up early Jan. So, you know use that uh, as a sort of uh, uh, few, uh, give a call for a future campaign for a social reform uh, movement. Uh, that is very much necessary and both amongst women and amongst men. Is because we feel that it is not only a women's issue, it is an issue for all sections including for men. Social reform cannot happen only for women, right? it has to happen for men and women social reform. And third thing is uh, our basic democratic rights enshrined in the constitution. That is a basic fundamental fight and we, and we join hands, we want to ensure that women will be part of this huge battle that I am sure is going to take place against the assault on democratic rights, intolerance, the way in which uh, history gets rewritten, the way in which Padmavati gets targeted in the most uh, absurd of manners, diverting attention from the Kisan struggles, diverting attention from the worker struggles, these kind of things now against all these to uh, uphold what uh, we fought and got in the constitution, what uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar said in those days that okay, we have put it down in writing, but for it to turn into reality, you will need a much greater and much wider struggle. So, I think that is the struggle that we are getting ready for and this national convention will give a call for that and we hope we will progress towards that goal.